Wait, let's see. Oh! What I think the best version of this would be. And so I went in and just kind of pitched them on finishing the movie correctly and Zack Snyder's Justice League and how we could market it and what it would mean to the fans and all that. And then they came over to my house and watched it. They, no one had ever seen this version of the movie. They were like, okay, we're, we're inclined to do it. And then the truth is, I th First thing they said was like, we want to release the Snyder Cut, but just in its raw form, unfinished, on HBO Max. And I was like, no. And I'll tell you why it's a no. It's a no for three reasons. One, if I release the movie, the internet leaves you alone. I don't know if that's a good idea or not. Two, if I release the movie in its raw form, you get all your viewers to HBO Max based on kind of, I don't want to say, just based on this rough version of the movie. And three, uh, you get to point at the movie and go, see, it's not that good. We were right. Look at how, look at how weird it's like. All those like previs and ugh, it's horrible. So I was like, that's a hard no. Do you feel like you've left the superhero genre behind now? Are you done with it? And is this your baby now? I know that your fans are so passionate about restoring the Snyderverse, but is that something, is that something well, that would even make you happy at this point? Like there just seems to be some some bad blood there. So so what? Well, I mean, I mean, the truth <laughs> is that you know Warner Brothers, um, they just they've been pretty clear, I think, with this sort of the concept that like they, they they're not interested in Zack Snyder take on the DC universe. That's just a, that's not conjecture. That's me just that they say that directly. So. Um, but of course, they also said that they had no interest and or were never going to release the Snyder Cut of Justice League. So that's, um, you know, but uh, do I love those characters and do I love that world? Yes. Um, I don't know. I don't know how to uh, necessarily continue in that world, but um, I'm, I, I do love those, those guys. And by the way, those are my good friends who play those parts. So it's, uh, it's uh, a little bit. It, I don't want to say it's sad, but it's just, it is what it is. So let's break down what Zack Snyder just revealed in that three minutes of different interviews that I displayed. So yo, what is good YouTube? What's you here with a video on Zack Snyder's Just Seek and what Zack Snyder recently has said about Green Lantern or what he didn't say. Also talking about Warner Brothers and also talking about could it go forward? So if you are new around here, make sure to subscribe to never miss any of the videos. Check us out on Instagram at Warstu if you want to see the face behind the voice. Also check us out on Twitter, Warstu G. Trying to build a community over there. So let's go through in chronological order. So during an interview, actually I don't know where it came from, but the clips there anyway, is we see Zachary Snyder or Zack Snyder show us he's got the footage of Wayne T. Carr playing his John Stewart Green Lantern and the VFX special effects is done. It's only a matter of time until it's released. Now I think from a legal standpoint, he wouldn't legally be allowed to release this footage, hence why we got Martian Manhunter in the Zack Snyder Justice League movie instead as Jeff John. Johns. Yes, Jeff Johns had a bit of a hissy fit because Zach wanted to put John Stewart in there and he was like, no, this is going to interrupt with the HBO Max Green Lantern series because it will because I'm using that character so Zach can't use it. So Zach said no compromise, but there was a bit of a compromisation, wasn't there? The final scene was supposed to have John Stewart in it alongside Martian Manhunter, allegedly. So this scene will come out. It was shot in his backyard. It's going to come out at some point, whether Zach leaks it or it comes out that way. I mean, I think he'd get in legalities and legal issues if he leaked it. But at some point, the scene will be released just like the whole movie was going to be released when uh, when it was said that the movie never existed. And people that don't understand post-production, the footage was always there. It's the post-production side wasn't done. Yes, he added a scene, a nightmare scene in his backyard with Ben Affleck, who's an alcoholic and was never, ever returning because every single trade in the world told you that. But what's you 
told you different. I said Ben Affleck would return one day, and he did a mere two, three years later. Not only that, Amber Heard was added to the scene, so was Gerard Leto Joker. So this scene will come out. It looks pretty cool. I can't wait to see the final scene, and it's definitely there because he's teased the idea of it, so we know at some point we're getting it. So what's interesting is Zach went on in the next segment of the intro. He went on to talk about the fact that no one at Warner Bros. had actually seen the movie at all. They wanted to throw out a cut that was the raw edit. No post-production, no VFX, no touch-up, nothing. So he said essentially people came over and they watched the movie for the first time and yeah, that, that, that's pretty much the info that we had and we've pretty much said that before on this channel. But yeah, they wanted to throw out the uncut edition and Zach was like, no, because the internet will blow up, the internet might leave you alone. But then he's like, it's not a good idea because then people at Warner Bros. Yeah, we are right. The movie sucked. It wasn't very good. Everyone knows the VFX wasn't done. But at the same time, it would have gave HBO Max the viewership and the new subscribers because let's be honest, the only reason they subscribed was for Zack Snyder's Justice League. Realistically, if you look at the data, I mean, even in England, you look at the data. Zack Snyder's Justice League has triple the traffic in the opening weekend that Godzilla vs. Kong has. But HBO America wants you to think that Godzilla vs. Kong crushed everything. It's also quite interesting that Deborah Snyder came out and said it's a bit strange how uh, the official HBO Max won't reveal the numbers for the Snyder Cup but she said she's seen numbers around the world I mean 250 million in China smashing Endgame it's been number one on digital download charts in the UK for three weeks yeah we're in May the movie uh, actually was released in March and it's still still number one in the UK I mean granted it only came out three weeks ago on digital download but it did so bad it really did so bad and then we go into an interview from an entertainment correspondent named Kirsten and she she essentially asked about the continuation of the Snyderverse because fans are so passionate and Zack Snyder didn't really answer it but he did he essentially said yeah but they were never going to release the Snyder Cut were they but they released that so although he is kind of giving some confirmation ish that he's done with that and he's happy about the army dead universe which is going to be absolute fire when you guys get to see it but then again he didn't close the door on it at all I mean a lot of people are taking this that worst you you're wrong worst you you lied Worst you, you are wrong about Henry Cavill Superman news. Guys, wait and then tell me if I'm wrong in six months' time. Okay, cool, cool. So Zach essentially didn't say anything, really. He just said that Warner Bros. doesn't really want to work with him. And that's pretty much the flat line of what he said. But what I find more interesting is the fact that he didn't close the door on it. Because obviously things are happening behind the scenes that he doesn't want to talk about. And that is obvious in every interview. Why do you think he teased the idea of the Green Lantern scene coming out? It is pretty interesting. All this is pretty interesting. It really is is interesting that it seems like the narrative is Warner Brothers are against Zack Snyder and they are because if you look at the numbers and people like to say yeah but theatrically all these movies flop you compare Iron Man 1 domestically well no sorry not domestically you compare Iron Man 1 box office to Man of Steel 1 Man of Steel makes more money you can keep going on and on because that's the metric people like to believe you can compare The Credible Hulk 260 million dollars Batman vs Superman 870 million dollars but these are only two movies into franchise we're comparing MCU to DCU Wonder Woman Zach is an EP on that. 820 million. Iron Man 2, 620 million. So realistically, the DCEU did great. There was someone that put a tweet out. What the director said about a studio being anti him when all of his movies, the universe underperformed, he to feel entitled to make unpopular things that cost hundreds of millions of dollars and do it multiple times. What planet does he live on? And then this person who's verified, Clarky Wolf, got destroyed. When you compare Iron Man to Man of Steel, Incredible Hulk, Batman vs Superman, Wonder Woman to Iron Man 2, because realistically, you're comparing the first three movies in both franchises, and the DCU absolutely crushes the MCU from this standpoint. But people are like, yeah, but that's not fair. Well, it is fair because that was the first movie in the DCU. So yeah, we compare the numbers, Man of Steel crushed. Iron Man. It is very interesting. So it's clear there's a market for this. It's clear Zack Snyder is having discussions behind the scenes. You can clearly see what he's saying by his body language, by how he's saying certain things. Guys, just keep watching, keep listening. Something is going on behind the scenes. It really is. Warner Brothers have been aggressively anti-Snyder, clearly not interested in his take, but they're interested in money. The amount of money this movie's made internationally, regardless of what it did on HBO Max, internationally, it's crushing. And Zack is teasing this green 
Green Lantern scene because he's gonna reveal it at some point. Walter Hamada, interesting, is now an EP on the Black Adam movie. He was always gonna be. And it's also an EP on the Flash movie. Now, what is interesting is there was a story that went around saying that Walter Hamada had nothing to do with that movie because The Rock is an EP because it's being developed by his production company, Seven and Bucks Productions. Okay, it's a DCEU movie regardless to what kind of hole you put it in. Hamadaverse, Snyderverse, War Stuverse, Shazamverse, JJverse. It's a DC film, so Walter Hamada will be EP on everything, even if he's got nothing to do with it. But people are like, yeah, but that's, but that, but you lied, you're backtracking. No, you're not backtracking. When the story came out, he wasn't an EP, and now his credentials, his creditations being added. It's a story evolving. People on the internet don't understand that stories in journalism, news, updates, they evolve. It's never a final story. You know, if and when Justice League 2 gets confirmed, people are like, yeah, yeah, they changed their mind. Oh, but does that, do we apply this backtracking theory here? No, the black tracking theory won't count here. But when Justice League 2 gets revealed, I'll be like, you guys are back. Oh, wait, no, the story's just been updated. It's evolved. It's changed. Evolution at its final. So like always, guys, let me know what you think is going on. Is Zack Snyder teasing the Green Lantern scene because Justice League 2 is coming? The fact that he's not shutting the door on these characters that he loves because they're played by his friends tell you an awful lot. And like always, guys, check us out on Instagram at WoshJew if you want to see the face behind the voice. Also check us out on Twitter, WoshJewG. And I will catch you in another video very soon. Catch you later.